guys, Matt Auber here with EV West. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about our accessory plate. Uh, one of the biggest uh, questions we get here at EV West is, what do you guys do about power brakes, uh, power steering, and air conditioning? So what we've done is we put together a great kit that mounts on the front of any Warp 9 or Warp 11 motor. Very cost effective solution and it will give you uh, belt driven air conditioning, power brakes, and power steering, all from a, a very modular small kit that just bolts right onto the front of this motor. Very, very universal kit. Um, this particular power steering pump, it comes as a 2.5 gallon per minute pump. That's as it comes, but it, it can go anywhere from 1.5 to 3.7 gallons per minute. So uh, let's go, you know, pretty much the, the 2.5 will cover 90% uh, of any applications, but uh, it is a very versatile pump. You can do a lot with it, just with a simple valve change over here. So uh, let's go ahead and set this thing up. So here we are at the front of the motor. Um, our tachometer sensor is actually designed to work with our accessory plate. So we're going to go ahead and actually start with that. This is a three pulse tachometer wheel or exciter wheel. Pretty much just going down. You take this down just a little bit past the plane here and there's a set screw on it. You just tighten that up. We've had very, very good luck with this tack sensor. It's worked with a lot of different tacks and a lot of different vehicles. Um, this is the cover plate here. This has got our um, proximity sensor inside. This just bolts right up here to the front. Really, really nice, clean installation. We're going to go ahead and just snug these down. So from this point, we're pretty much ready to install the accessory plate on there. All right, so here's our accessory plate. We're just going to go ahead and set it on the motor. And that just, that'll ride right on the pilot of the motor as well as the tack sensor. And, and you can see there's a bunch of different holes here. With, uh, with different transmission plates, the motor can be clocked in different ways. So we try to, you know, try to be as, as uh, variable as we possibly can, give you a lot of options. So with this one, we're going to rotate to about there. And these, uh, these bolts just thread right into the existing holes of the accessory side of the end bell. This is, uh, this is actually the exact system that we have in the Ford Ranger right now. And uh, I believe we're up to you know, seven, 8,000 miles on that kit and not an ounce of problems. It's just been working really, really well. So we'll snug all these out. Now the beauty about this system is that uh, on this side, it, it's this can be swapped out for any air conditioning pump that you have. That's kind of the, the, the design of it. These components, this, the, the, the valves can be changed on this side. Vacuum is pretty much vacuum, so you're good with every vehicle there. The only thing that does really change is the air conditioning. So this bracket can be pulled off, and you know, if you send in your air conditioning compressor, we can, have, we can build, um, you know, build a bracket that'll mount your air conditioning compressor to our system. So. All right, and we already have this system here. Uh, like I said, this is the same one out of our Ford Ranger. So here is a Ford Ranger air conditioning pump. Just a three bolt setup. We do have these little spacers that we have to use to keep it off of the top of the plate. But this is just, we're gonna go ahead and do this next. And we're just gonna slide this down into the three holes there. Thread these nuts down just a little bit. Now, in every kit, we're gonna we're gonna put these. Uh, these are three sixteenths pieces of aluminum, and what the idea is here is that we you put this behind the pulley, and in between the accessory plate. And what this is doing is it's lining everything up. 
So before you tighten the air conditioning compressor down, you just put a little bit of pressure like that and then you pretty much go around all three of these bolts and just tighten them up. Okay. Now, what again? That's that's basically made the made sure that the pulley is straight in line with everything else, and the depth is correct. So we can go ahead and pull these out. Now we're going to go ahead and put the crank pulley on. And this will just slide on just like this. And again, the same thing with these. Put them right behind there. Push it all the way down. And then just go ahead and tighten. There's a little 5 16 set screw. And just tighten that down. And now you can pull these out. Just like that. So now, I mean, that's, that's virtually it. Um, we're going to go ahead and put the belt on now. Very, as you can see, a very easy system to put together much easier when it's in the car. I'm just going to go around just like that. Pretty much the, uh, I should set this up here a little bit. You just use a you know, pretty good sized breaker bar. This tensioner has fair amount of spring to it. Go ahead and cinch it all the way down. Wrap it around everything else. And the last thing you should do is just roll it right over the tensioner. Make sure it's in all the grooves. Okay, so as that, you kind of just walk it around. Again, this is, uh, this is quite a bit easier when it's actually on the vehicle because you can actually torque on it a little bit more. But I uh, just kind of walk this back and forth, just like that. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Once you have this in the vehicle, um, in fact, before you put the belt on, with all your lines hooked up, you really want to take this by hand and kind of hand prime it a little bit so you don't burn up the pump. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can jack the front end of the vehicle up and turn the steering wheel back and forth about 10 times without the motor running. And that really pushes any air bubbles through and really helps with the bleeding. So uh, I think right now we can go ahead and probably power it up. Just put on some safety glasses here. Yeah, let's go ahead and power this thing up. So there you go. You know, as you can tell, I mean, I'm able to talk normally with this. Uh, even if this air conditioning compressor was engaged and it was compressing, it'd be really quiet. The vacuum, as you can hear, is pretty much dead silent, and the power steering is silent. So, anyways, uh, that's about it. Uh, you know, look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks a lot.